Uh, my name is Alketa Jafamripa. I am a conceptual artist from Kosovo, living in London. I grew up in an artistic family, and seeing my father from a young age, always painting, expressing himself in a visual way, expressing his, I suppose, struggles of the nation, Albanian identity, pain, segregation, fear. I thought that that was the way one expresses himself. And in 1997, I moved to London. I moved there to study fine art. In 1998, the war broke down in Kosovo and I couldn't come back. The first time I went back, it was 2003. There were lots of stories. A woman and girls and boys and men being, that were raped. We talked about it. We knew about it. So, yeah, since from the beginning, we knew that, I knew that. But it wasn't until 2013, which means 10 years after, when I was confronted by a TV interview and I watched how a woman behind the curtain was talking about sexual violence, what happened to her, and no one is thinking of them. And my reaction was like, I'm thinking of you. We are thinking of you. And that's how the title of the installation started. Then I started thinking of the woman and the girls and the symbolism of the dress and the skirt. Because they didn't want no names. They didn't want no faces. They didn't want no numbers. So I had to protect the privacy. And everyone can donate a dress. There were very emotional stories, for sure. But what I, I, I felt and what I saw on them is, in majority, is that when they gave the dress, it was kind of sense of relief. It's like, and they said it, here's this dress, take it. And with this dress, I'm letting it all go. As I was, as I was putting the dresses, each dress, Yes, it was dedicated for the survivor of sexual violence in Kosovo. But at the same time, as I was putting it, it was like, this is for the Congo. This is for a Maymar. This is for Bosnian woman. My aim was always to have a global art installation. My name is Drandoli, and I'm the ambassador of the Republic of Kosovo in the Kingdom of the Netherlands. It was back in 2015. Uh, I was working in Kosovo then. Uh, I visited the art installation when it was opened. It was quite impressive. It, it left me speechless. And uh, when I arrived here in The Hague, I was walking uh, throughout Langefer Haut one day after a conference that we discussed, among uh, many other things, war crimes. Uh, it just uh, came to me, okay, can we probably bring Al-Qaeda in The Hague? And there are two, two main reasons for it. First of all, uh, it is this my personal feeling about it, but it's also about uh, memory, remembrance and accountability. With myself, I thought that probably we can do it. And uh, finally, uh, I'm very happy to see that we did it. When the call from the ambassador 
Dolly came and I told him about my idea, about the global one. And he started from there. We went to the municipality of The Hague. We had the meeting with the deputy mayor. She trusted me with her streets, I suppose. From there, I met Dr. McQuege in 2018. And I told him that I would love to collaborate with you one day. And he said, we will, we will one day. And when we speak with Ambassador Dodoli, I say that I would love to collaborate with McQuaige Foundation because they have their offices in The Hague. The importance of Dr. McQuaige is that foundation is that they have the organization in more than 25, 26 countries and collaboration with the SEMA members. McQuaige with the SEMA collected dresses from all these places and they brought it to The Hague. Strong, it's nice, perfect. It's a beautiful space, huh? Wow. And now slowly, you're gonna see it. It's coming to life. The stories are gonna come to life and they're gonna be like, you know, the flags of other countries when they say, here we are, this is our country. These are gonna be the stories and the flags of the woman of the survivors coming all together in one. I'm hoping that the key decision makers can really work towards the changing of the policy of the survivors and bring actually their stories to the forefront to change the law. So powerful. Today we are here installing the second part of the art installation. Now finally the whole artwork is complete. This is what I want because in order to make a difference, sky should be the limit. And that's why we are here and the sky is our limit, our ceiling in a way. Because it's very important to have everyone is included, everyone is welcome, everyone will pass by and they will see the artwork. And it's educational, as I say, it's awareness. So it's accessible to everyone, not only to a few, but everyone can come and see it and opens dialogue and discussion and that's what we want. It happens and it affects all of us and it's a way to make us stop and realize and think that, yeah, women are getting the short end of the stick, as they say. Um, so yeah, it's impressive. It looks really good um, at the location. 
and it brings a topic that usually doesn't get discussed and you know this installation brings attention it really serves a purpose to you know raise awareness for me is it a heel is a underbelicht thema je hoort natuurlijk verkrachting in conflictgebieden en dan gaat het weer verder terwijl er wordt eigenlijk niet echt een een beeld gegeven aan de mensen die daar achter zitten die dames hebben dit aangehad en alle uh, nou, van alle delen van de wereld, ook weer heel verbindend. Well, I've worked in war-torn countries doing international humanitarian work. And um, I've never seen an exhibit as powerful as this to really represent the horror of war. You start yourself reflecting upon the stories. And the woman and the war and then towards the end I think you come in peace with it that's how I felt and as I went and then when I looked in the back and seeing all those dresses seeing coming together to me it felt like they're holding hands saying here we are and you have to hear our stories. And we are in The Hague, right? Where a criminal court of justice is situated. City of peace and justice. And this is how I suppose sometimes revolution starts in a way. Take up the streets and tell the truth. So I'm really hoping that something is gonna come out. Definitely, it's raising questions a lot. It creates dialogue opens conversation, people talk about it, and that's what you want. You want people to talk about it. I'm Denis Mukwege from uh, Republic Democratic of Congo. I can say that it's very emotional. It reminds me, some of them I've treated many years ago, and uh, especially when I can see the dresses of children, it's just giving you this feeling that you got when you treat them for this horrible rape and uh, destruction of their body. You can't understand why someone can destroy another person like that. And to see these clothes is really bringing me very close of victims I'm treating at Panzi Hospital. The Red Line Initiative is coming from the Mukwege Foundation. All this hanging, I have a red line because we, we have not only uh, to get compassion and to, uh, for, for victims, but we need also to prevent. Today we know that it's, happen it's happening everywhere, but it's our responsibility to say this must stop. There is no reason that rape can be used as a weapon of war. And use rape as a weapon of war is not only uh, to destroy women, is to destroy also our humanity, is to destroy our dignity. And I think that we should stand up as just one person and say, this must stop. When we brought dresses from Uganda, from Sudan, from Colombia, we found in many of the bags, we found little notes. And some survivors had put a name on the dress. So for them, it's really a sign, we're ready to break the silence but we want you to act. They don't need to see the dress to feel the pain, but to know that thousands of people in The Hague today will see the dresses and they hope that we will all support them to end this cycle of violence. A lot of people walk in here day and day after day after day after day and I've seen so many people looking up and then reading the text on the, on the board of Thinking of You and people are so moved and so touched. The more people know about these stories and the more people fight this injustice, uh, the more higher up the message will be brought. 
I was only 16 when I was abducted and taken to a Serbian village. Serbians were our enemies. And for a 16-year-old girl to go in a Serbian village, be raped and tortured by multiple people, it was devastating. Just as felt the only hope or the only strength I had that needed to be done, it was to bring stigma and, st and start speaking of the hideous crime that Serbian did to 20,000 men, women, including children, as young as five that were raped by Serbian forces. Alketa, I want to thank you for this expedition, not just doing it in Kosovo and in Hague, but I'm hoping it will go across the globe because we want nothing more than to be heard, to be believed, and to be joined to fight to end stigma, but most importantly, justice. Thank you all very much. We had a discussion earlier on about all the good things that I was supposed to talk about. But uh, walking in here today and seeing my daughter's dress hanging here, it has um, done something to me. Today is 19th June, the day of eliminating sexual violence in conflict. And from the north, from the south, from the east and from the west of this globe, I say that we are healed and walk in the healing that we are supposed to walk today. I seek, I ask you, to remember that this is a day when we honor those that have been violated. In this city of justice, I ask you, my fellow citizens, to draw the red line to ending conflict-related sexual violence. بس بدي اقول لهم انه يا ريت يوصلوا اصواتنا كمان كمان وكمان لحتى نقول ستوب للاعتقال وللعنف الجنسي لنعيش كلياتنا بسلام Looking at each dress I could feel I could see one survivor a beautiful survivor a beautiful woman, a strong woman. <laughs>